Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to ask you a question about people you may have known in your life. Have you ever heard someone speak? You knew they were speaking English, but yet they were so intelligent, and what they were saying was so specialized that you didn't understand a word of it? <laughs> I know a man like that. He's the other doctor in my life, if you will. His name is Dr. Doug Gobey. Dr. Doug Gobey is definitely a wolf in sheep's clothing. We just heard a little bit about biblical times. That's where the term a wolf in sheep's clothing comes from. It actually predates Aesop by a couple thousand years. And it was originally quoted by Jesus when he said, A false prophet is like a shepherd who is a wolf in sheep's clothing. To paraphrase, all that good stuff. So when I think about Doug, though, I don't think about biblical times. I actually think about Lao Tzu and the Tao Te Ching which is a text that predates Christianity by another few thousand years, and it has this to say about wolf in sheep's clothing. It says that people judge outward appearances, and so the wise man hides the jewel of his wisdom. Well, that's what Dr. Doug Gobey does. Now, today's lesson, if you will, because he's a doctor and I get in that mode with him, it's about creating an outward appearance that you can use for your benefit, which is something Dr. Gobey does exceptionally well. Doug is an expert in one of the most complicated sciences that exists, and that's why when this picture sequence came up, I said, yes, perfect for my speech. Dr. Doug Gobey is an astrophysicist <laughs> at the University of South Florida. So all these pictures that we're seeing here, he could probably tell you where they were taken, what part of the year they were taken, what they mean, where they are, all that good stuff. And so it's amazing because he's a young man, a little older than me, young 30s, and yet his contemporaries in his field are Einstein and Stephen Hawking. <laughs> These are the, the people that can speak his language, if you will. And so when I've attended his open lectures, I hear these wonderful speech topics, which, a lot like Toastmasters, um, are incredibly vague and might not hit the point exactly, but the first 15 seconds of the universe in an hour, or the mathematical probability of alien life. Right? And then again, I'm listening, and I know he's speaking English, but I can't understand what he's saying. <laughs> All right? And so, Doug is not one of those professors that spends his time behind mounds of books covered in chalk dust. He, he likes to balance his life a little bit, and so he participates in one of Tampa's most extreme sports, and this is riding a bicycle on public roads. Woo! Okay? <laughs> Every story I hear about his commute to or from work is a near-death experience, and so it's really entertaining to talk to him about that. Well, the story that really proved to me that you can be a wolf in sheep's clothing and how he took advantage of that concept happened as a result of his bicycle. Because he lives on Nebraska Avenue, which is a neighborhood that would have to have a few more robberies to be considered a bad neighborhood. It's actually a level below that. Uh, you have to lock your car or they'll steal your car and everything in your home just for good measure. All right. So he parks his car behind a fence so nobody can see it, rides his bike to work. He figures it's just a little bit safer. And so after a hard day of building a mathematical equation explaining the birth of the universe, he's pedaling home. It's about a 15, 20 minute ride for him to get home. Pedaling home, he gets to his house, gets off of his bike, puts it on the front porch, and he walks in his house to greet his two golden retrievers, Penny and Porthos. And he hears something on the porch, the pitter-patter of little feet, if you will. So he opens the door to see a man walking away with his bicycle. <laughs> he came onto his porch, took his bike, and now he's making, the, making it their own, just made off with it. Well, this isn't just any bicycle to Doug. This is his mode of, mode of transportation. It's his, his ride, his steed, if you will. And so, he took off after the thief. Well, for Doug, because he's in his job field, he doesn't get to muster a lot of emotion. So when he yelled, stop, it came out in a way that might have startled the thief because when we don't yell and we manage to get the gumption to do it, it does tend to sound off pretty loudly. And he pursued, began pursuit of that thief. But before I tell you what happened between him and the thief, I need to tell you how Dr. Doug Gobey and I met. I teach a martial art here in Tampa called Aikido, and it's a martial art that is akin to mimicking nature, if you will, for moving forces, moving strength. And so when a practitioner attacks someone who's versed in Aikido, it's like attacking a wave, because we understand how to flow in harmony. 
So one day I step on the mat to teach the class here at the dojo in Tampa, and I see a man in a different uniform performing spinning back kicks, which is the opposite of what we do in Aikido. And so I asked him what martial art he was practicing, and he said that it was a martial art called Tang Su Do, which is like the alcoholic cousin of Taekwondo that no one talks about at the family gatherings. Okay? Really vicious stuff. Uh, if you imagine Aikido like water moving through a stream, Tang Su Do is like the bull in the china shop. All right? And so now that you understand that about Doug, he has a third degree black belt in that martial art. Oh and so when he began pursuit of that thief, uh -huh. I knew it was going to be an interesting story. Uh -huh. <laughs> It was the beginning of the end of that thief, if you will. This was a very <laughs> fictitious mistake. So has anyone ever seen Sherlock Holmes with Robert Downey Jr.? Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay, you know before a fight scene, he actually pauses and thinks about the entire sequence of the fight, and that's how intelligent he is? Doug's on that level. And so he said when he approached that thief, it was not a matter of how do I win, but what strange method or mode can I use to cause this man extreme pain and get my bike back. And so he approached the man running, and the man, seeing this young, skinny-looking fellow running toward him, glasses, you know, very professor-ish look, he decided that a right hook would solve the problem of this man pursuing him so he could get his bike home, his stolen bike home. <laughs> and so Doug reached under the man, picked him up by his chin, and set him down very gently on the pavement. You have to do this very carefully, you understand, because the back of the skull is fragile. Do it too hard and you'll crack someone's skull and kill them. A bike's not worth going to jail over, Doug understood this. So after a little bit of tussle and struggle on the ground, Doug managed to lock the man's neck with his left arm, around the man's right arm with his, and actually linked his hands in the back. This is a very effective hold that causes extreme amounts of pain. The thief realized at this point that it was time for him to die, and he just had to accept that fact. <laughs> well, the police, coincidentally, had arrived by this time, and this man started screaming, crying, yelling, bruised up, bleeding and broken about how he was just walking down the street when this fellow jumped off his porch and attacked him. And so the police looked at Doug and they said, Sir, are you a bouncer or a security guard by any chance? And Doug said, No, I'm... The police officer said, What? What do you do for a living? Thinking that this was assault, he's going to charge him. And Doug looked at him and he mustered up every bit of his five foot eight ounce frame and he said, Sir, I am a professor of astrophysics and he stole my bicycle! <laughs> well, as you can imagine, the police verifying Doug's credentials understood what had happened. The man was arrested and brought to prison. And so the lesson is not to judge a book by its cover, because we all know those big six foot seven men who have the hearts of gold who would never hurt a fly. I tell you, those are not the people you have to worry about in life. You have to worry about the professors, the people that wear glasses, the astrophysicists. <laughs> they truly are the wolves in sheep's clothing. Thank you.